The historic discourse as this, for the significance of the cross, whether the cross has religious significance, uh, I'm about to bring it to an end right now. Now, um, Christ died on the cross, and perhaps this has elevated it to something special. And then Peter, Paul, on the other hand, is saying that he glories in the cross of Christ. Now, what was really um, Paul saying? Paul wasn't saying that he is glorying in that piece of wood. He was saying he was glorying in the principle that Christ, who had been slain from the foundation of the world, actualized it. And this is what he was really um, having the thrill and the faith in because uh, from uh, Adam and, and all the people who are in heaven, uh, it depended on it Christ successfully uh, you know, dying on the cross and for us uh, until he comes. So this is what Paul was glorying in, not necessarily in the wood. And um, you have in the Bible when uh, a serpent, I think, had bitten the Israelis uh, when they rebelled against God and he uh, put a serpent on top of a cross. And those who looked at it were um, healed of the uh, venom and so on. So why would God put a serpent on a, a cross and when they looked at it, they have sought of salvation? God has, um, from the beginning, He knows everything. He knows every path I'm going to make and the various paths that I could have made. And, and those are the paths that I would have made. He could look at all the billions of, and trillions of moves that I could have made and, 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 and guide me to the one that was most successful for me. And so He saw that His Son would die on the cross and therefore, um, you know, that was the whole situation with that. But you really got to remember that the people who crucified Christ not only the Jews, but the Romans, uh, they hated him so badly. And uh, my understanding is that the T, and I think St. Francis wears the T, T was for the name of some god, I think it was Talmus or something like that. And um, when anybody is crucified on that cross, it's a pagan symbol that their god has taken the life or some significance it has in paganism. So would God want paganism to be a part of his uh, legacy and his uh, religious uh, heritage and so on? I don't think so. Now Brazil has a very disguised one here. A French a sculpture um, designed it and then a, a, a Brazilian architect or engineer um, put it together and they put it up on this hill and they call it Christ the Redeemer. It's a cross basically and um, you could, you know, it, it's an imaginary cross there, and I'm not sure a lot of people go up there worshiping the Christ or the cross. Now, um, will there be a cross in heaven? And it's an absolute no, because um, not because he promised that the son is going to die on a cross, and it happened that the cross gets significance. Now, a lot of churches are using cross, and some people tell me that oh, it's not about paganism; it's just a way of saying that um, this is a religious person. So in an airport, if there's a disaster and people walking around with, with a cross on the shirt, you know that they're supposed to be clergy and then you coalesce to them and get the help that you need, you know, and so on. But there are other ways of knowing a clergy. You'd be happy, you'd have a different demeanor to the people who are there that are disturbed and, and perplexed and so on. Um, no, 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 no. There's not going to be no cross in heaven and God does not want any cross in His church also. So number one, if you see cross in a church, it might be a, a reason that you might want to skip away because you would suspect that they have been subverted by paganism and by Satan and, and you just got to be careful. Now, um, there are churches out here that um, I believe God has started and um, He's leading. You see, um, God has always had people who were faithful to Him. During the Dark Ages, the Middle Ages, from the beginning had uh, Adam and Eve and then uh, Cain killed Abel who was a faithful person and then uh, set came on and so on Noah and all the rest of that so God has always had people serving him and even in this day he has a body and people are everywhere that are supposed to be in that body and, and, and are following him sincerely but even trust me I think I know which body is that and even this body has crosses in them and this is a, a clear subversion long time ago there was no cross but as the Antichrist uh, tries to dominate the world He's infiltrating these churches and taking them to paganism and bringing in cross and a whole bunch of other things so as to neutralize uh, Christianity. But just as in the Middle Ages, uh, when the uh, Christian Reformation was stopped, I believe that um, you know they're trying to stop even this uh, remnant Reformation. And so it's only the people who are there just for the fun 
and not necessarily following Jesus. You see, um, Jesus said, um, uh, the fear of the Lord is to begin the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. All right? He's the one that gives wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You just have to ask him. And um, when people come to you with complex sophistry and lies and they're trying to mix you up, all you have to do is, you don't even close your eyes and say, is this true, Jesus? And you will know. You will know that it's not true and, and you'll just uh, ignore it and just look for the truth. You go to college, every concept you're dealing with, you and your God working it out and you're coming out, out there with valid, reliable and, and you know real good principles. All the ones that are bogus, you will avoid them. And so, um, although churches might you know have the cross, and even those that are pagan and have cross straight up, there are a lot. There are many people in there who aren't necessarily worshiping that wood. They're looking beyond that. They're looking. They they in, intuitively and instinctively are searching for Jesus, the one who died in the cross, not the cross. All right. So um, there isn't going to be no cross in heaven. Not even one like uh, Jesus the Redeemer. No, there's not going to be no cross up there. It's going to be Jesus alone. And um, the nails in his hand and feet will remind us of the cruel death he has had. The cross was just a cruel instrument of death. Um, perhaps if Christ were to be born today and lived among us, he would still be crucified, but um, it wouldn't be a cross, of course. It would be either the electric chair, um, firing squad, sword, maybe guillotine, um, you know, poisoning, um, gas chamber, so that that would be so Paul might have said I glory in the gas chamber or I glory in the guillotine it doesn't mean that he's glorying that instrument of death he's glorying in the opportunity that Christ has had to come and fulfill the promise that he has made that he's gonna save people from the beginning and until the end so um, the cross uh, and, and you know for example not even across they could have put, uh, any of these four aforementioned methods of executing them they could have had they could have had somebody drive the car into him and say that there's an accident but really it's an execution it's it's you know all that had to happen is this blood had to be spilled no bones broken but the blood spilled so how would gas chamber accomplish the spilling of the blood maybe uh, the guard would have gotten upset and just you know uh, with his nails um, say you, you you know give him something and, and scratch him and bled that's enough um, well the guillotine is obvious he's going to bleed uh, the injection uh, lethal injection he's going to bleed um, you know that was important the bleeding the blood all right and so um, yeah we put this to an end don't don't let nobody um, tell you that the holy cross and all this stuff there's nothing holy in a cross Christ's death on the cross did not make the cross holy the, this, the cross was a symbol of paganism, the hatred they had for him, a cruel death, and that's all it's about. So, not because God referred to it and, and used a cross in the past uh, with a serpent that he's given credence or, or saying that this is what we ought to be worshipping now, it's Jesus only. And, and looking to the cross with a serpent, it wasn't necessarily that they were to look at that per se, but they were to take their minds beyond that and just visualize the Christ dying on the cross Jesus coming and being born that was, it was about faith in the future he's gonna come he's gonna die he's gonna go to heaven he's gonna come again and take all those who are serving him with him 